fellow diamond painting addicts and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne and I'm here today to <laughs> kit up my 275 color Josephine Wall diamond painting Deutschland called Melody in Pink. This is kind of going to be a combination unboxing slash kit up slash preparation <laughs> video because I have a lot of stuff to do for this. So when I bought this kit, it was my understanding that it was going to be 300 colors, even though it was the round version. I have since learned in looking at their website, apparently only the square version is 300 colors. The round version is 275. However, lots of confusion because as you can see, this says 300 colors. It's got the inventory sheet with 300 colors. On the tube that the diamond painting was shipped to me in, it says, that it is round diamonds but 300 colors so i don't know if it used to be offered in 300 colors and they made some change and that's why the confusion so i have to sort all that out while i'm kidding it up because i thought this was going to have 300 colors i knew that i wasn't going to have enough storage and so i went looking for solutions so i purchased this a while ago and i can't tell you where but i'll go find the link and i'll stick it down below I think I just bought it off of Amazon. This is a 140 bottle case. These are regular size bottles. So there's this layer, and then there is another layer of the regular size. So I've got two layers of the standard size bottle cases. Now, something I don't like, the bottom of this foam is cut all the way through. So if you're not careful, and I'm sure when the drills are heavy, they could fall through because they the lids fit all the way through. So that's something I'll need to pay attention to. So I can fit 140 in here. Well, that wasn't going to be enough because I thought I was gonna have 300. So in between buying this, buying this case, and after I opened this and realized that it didn't have 300 colors, it only had 275, I decided I would try some of the Art Dot storage. I've seen so many people using these, everybody seems to be really thrilled with them, so I ordered the four drawer tower from Art Dot. Make sure you're doing some shopping around because I ordered mine, I think on Amazon, and got a decent price for it. You can order it directly from Art Dot, you can order it from Amazon, you can get it lots of other places. Walmart carries them, Target, I'm sure craft stores, Michaels, Joann's, that kind of thing. However, when I went back out to look and see to do some comparison pricing, the Walmarts near me only carry the two drawer version, which is not what I wanted. I wanted the four drawer one. And I think I paid somewhere $25, $30 for mine. Michael's wants $91 for this exact same thing. So I don't know who's in charge of Michael's markups, but wow, that's insane. So yeah, make sure you do some shopping around. So the four drawer kit, and I've already done a couple of drawers. It comes with these little pieces of paper, but it's hard to get the drawers in and out with those pieces of paper because they get stuck, especially if the bottles have moved around during shipping, which obviously mine have. So this lid came off of one of these and trying to get them all sit back up and where they belong is not always the easiest task. There's the one the lid came off of. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to like these drawers given that I don't know how well these are gonna stay put given that they seem to move around quite a bit. But I figured I would give them a try. And some of these, I don't know how they managed to get turned upside down in here. So I've fixed two of the other drawers and see they, they don't, I'm sure there's a rhyme or reason to a good way that they fit in here, but I feel like there's a hole there. So this was the bottom drawer, I've done the top two. I'm gonna take the top one out because the third one here, they put these lovely little pieces of paper on top of them, but when everything got moved around, it gets shoved back in there and I can't get this third drawer out because the piece of paper has been moved around. So now I'm trying to reach in and get this piece of paper out of the way. 
so I can open the drawer because you can see here in this drawer as well, things have gotten moved around in transit. So I need to get all of that straightened. This one wasn't nearly as bad as the other two. So I've got my four drawers of storage, which is supposed to be 192 bottles, if I remember correctly. So between that and the 140, and there's a top piece for this. It came with a funnel. I don't use these, but it's got some storage for trays and pins and whatever else you want to stick in there. So I have that. And it also came with some stickers. I won't use these either. So those will just get recycled. So I should have enough between the two of these to have my 275 colors. I just went back and checked and it's actually 192 bottles in the four drawer storage. But between that and the 140 bottle case, I should have more than enough. Now, I considered going through and putting washi tape on all of these because I don't know how well these pre-made stickers that they use will peel off of the bottles, but I've decided that's a problem for future me. I want to get this kitted up so I can start working on it. The faster I get it kitted up, the sooner I can start working on it, the sooner I can start working on it, the sooner I get it finished. So I'm going to throw caution to the wind and I'm just going to put these stickers on the bottle cases. The thing is, I don't know, see if I look at these, I think these stickers are going to be maybe just a bit too big. Let me just try the first one and see if these are going to fit nicely on the tops of the bottles because there's a lot of white space around them. So I'm thinking maybe what I'll do is just go down and cut in strips and kind of make it so that just the number, the DMC number with the symbol is in the middle. I guess they're not terrible to fit on there, but there is a little bit of overlap, which is not what I want. So I'm going to go through and cut all of these before I put them on. Now, I normally would just cut them down this way, but because they have put the stickers on in numerical order, DMC order across like this, I likely will use my little, no, I can't do that because what I need to cut off is the edges. So yeah, this will be fun. Okay. That makes it a little bit more challenging. And also I think I only have 275 stickers. So again, this kit was apparently just a mess of confusion from the get go. My size was wrong, the colors are wrong, but I have the right stickers. Although I have looked through and I do think I have the drills because I do have two colors that I don't have stickers for. So I think they sent me the drills of the 300 colors. What's going to happen though, I think, is there are going to be some colors that I'm short of. So I may need to go get my spares because obviously those, what, 25 colors are going to be made up with other colors. Maybe I'll have enough extras of the colors I need that I won't need to go digging in my spares, but we'll see. So I'm going to start with the bottle case and put them in the bottle case first. And I'm just going to kit up everything by DMC. I know there's lots of people who have said they go through and put all of the light colors together or the light symbols together. For me personally, I have always done it by DMC. And I think if I tried to do it a different way, I would just confuse myself. The one thing about Diamond Painting Deutschland, at least for the two kits that I have done, a lot of these symbols are the exact same symbols and numbers that I did for Diana. So like this symbol, this car was the symbol for 161 in Diana as well. So I think, I don't know if it's just J Wall or Diamond Painting Deutschland as a whole, but I think once they pick a symbol for a number, that's the symbol for that DMC across kits at least for the two J walls that I've done. So I'm gonna do some cutting. I'm gonna go get the drills. I'm gonna move the art dot out of the way for now because I'm gonna be working with the bottle case here and then I'll get started. Don't go anywhere. All right, as you guys can see, I've done a little bit while I was off camera. I've taken all of the bottles out of this first piece of foam. Like I said, the foam is got a hole all the way through. so. Once I have the drills in the bottles, I'll need to be a little bit careful about moving them, but I should only have to lift the top layer out. So we'll see how it goes. I decided to not cut the stickers just because the way that they're laid out on the sheet makes it really difficult to cut them the way that I wanted, unless I was gonna cut each one individually. That did not sound like loads of fun. 
they do fit on the top of the bottles. They're bigger than I would like, but they fit okay without a bunch of overlap as long as I put them pretty carefully. And I'm hoping that means it'll also make them a little bit easier to peel off when I'm done. So I have opened the first sleeve of drills. I have separated them into DMC numbers, get to halfway through the 600s, I think. So I've got the first three rows of stickers put on the bottles, so I'm ready to go. I'm going to be using my Bella Art funnel here because I'm doing the bottle cases. And a lot of these colors, because there are so many of them, there's just not going to be a lot of drills. Oh goodness, and I just now thought, I wonder if there's going to be any static in these. I really hope not. And this first one does have static. All right, let me go grab my static spray so I've at least got that handy. If you hear any weird noises in the background, I apologize. I'm filming this later than I usually do because I have no idea how long this is going to take. It may be, take me multiple days of kidding up to get this done. Diana did, so this may as well. It is, uh, people are getting home from work, so loud cars with no mufflers are driving by, and I'm currently fighting with my computer. I have two hard drives, portable hard drives, that I attach to my Mac Mini because video files take up a lot of storage space. And so I have a drive that I use all the time where I keep my video files for the current year that I'm working with. And then at the end of the year, I have another portable hard drive where I transfer them to. And apparently having them both plugged in at the same time is no bueno for the mini. One of the portable hard drives keeps getting confused and disappearing itself in the middle of a file transfer. So it's been a fun day. Okay, let me go grab my static spray and I will be right back. Don't go anywhere. I'm also going to be kind of checking off these on the inventory sheet as I go so I can figure out which colors I have and which ones I don't. Like I said, I've already gone through and just because I know that 310 is a color that I have that I don't have a sticker for, yeah, I'm just going to be trying to keep note of that as I go through. You know, normally my neighborhood is pretty quiet. I don't know why we suddenly seem to have acquired so many cars that make so much noise especially when I'm trying to film, which admittedly I usually film earlier in the day when, huh, interesting. And I just realized that's the wrong color. Okay, that's 151 because 150 is a color that I don't need. So interesting, I don't have a 150 or a 150. I do have a 151. So let me peel off 151 or 150 I mean, and I'm going to put it back on the sticker sheet here. So that's very interesting. So I don't have a 150 and 150 is not on my sheet. So I wonder if I need 150 and I don't have it. That's probably way more likely. All right, so let me put this back on here because I need to assume the stickers are right and my inventory sheet is wrong and I need to pay way more attention. Okay, so I'm gonna need drills number 150. I'm just gonna set that over there. And then how do I wanna delineate this? So I'm circling the ones that I don't have or that I have that I don't need. So if I circle, let me just circle it this way and in pink. No, I have 151, I need 150, which is not on my list. So let me just write up here 150. And I have no idea how many of those I need because it's not on my list. So I do have 151. Let me just mark off all the 100s really quick while I'm doing this. 169. All right, so I have all of those colors. The question is, do I actually need all of them? All right, 152. I had a sticker for that. Now I'm questioning if I have 300 stickers. I probably should go through and count the stickers before I kit too many more of these up to see what's going on. Should probably go grab as well the schematic off of the canvas because I've cut it apart and go through that. So I think I'm gonna go grab that and I will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Okay, you guys, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. <laughs> I don't honestly know what's going on. I'm just gonna kit this up to the best of my ability and I'll see where I end up. So 
I went and grabbed the schematic that I cut off of the canvas because it takes up a huge amount of space and just makes it easier to fit. Now, this one does say 275 colors, but it does not say number 150. So I start off with 151 and then 152. Also, this one goes across like this. I don't know why they do it that way. Anyway, I'm not sure why I have a sticker because it doesn't appear that I need number 150. So I'm just gonna set this one off to the side for now and see if I come across any other ones like this. Yeah, confusing. Also, when I counted up the stickers, I have 276 stickers. So I don't know if that's because I have this one that I don't need and I do need all the rest. Like I said, we'll see. So I'm just gonna set that one aside and I'm gonna get up all these other ones because what else can I do? Like I said, it doesn't appear that I need the 150, so I'm not sure why there is a sticker for it. And I'm just going to be using my static spray and my Q-tip trick for this. Now, I did this with my last get up and I had lots of questions from you guys about why I just don't use dryer sheets. And if dryer sheets work for you, then awesome. They don't work for me. I am very sensitive to smells. I get migraines easily with things that are heavily scented. That's issue number one for me. And then issue number two is, in order to do the dryer sheets really effectively, you need to handle them, cut them up, put them in the containers, the little small pieces, you need to, I've seen people are like, pour the drills in there, rub them in the dryer sheets, and I'm sure it works, but it just takes too much time for me. I would rather just use my spray. I can, it does not get, the static spray does not give me a headache like the dryer sheets do, and I can just move on with what I'm doing. So if static sheets work for you, great. If dryer sheets work for you, great. But I just have better luck with the static spray. Although I may need to go buy another bottle if all 275 colors have static in them. That is going to be no bueno for this kit up. And like I said, I have no idea how long this is going to take if I need to do like a time lapse for this. <laughs> because I just, yeah, have honestly no idea how long this is going to take. And given the situation with, I don't know which drills I need, which ones I don't. Okay, so that was 154. Okay, 155. I was looking at the wrong row and thinking that I didn't have drills for that color, but I do. All right, I'm going to open a couple of these up and use my static spray. I was hoping that every single one would not have static, but it doesn't appear to be working out that way for me, so... I guess I just need to add static spray to my grocery list because I have a feeling I'm going to run out of spray by the time I'm done kitting this entire kit up. And as you can see, even with the static spray, one go round doesn't always get rid of all the static. This is not turning out to be a very fun kit up, but it is what it is, right? I gotta get it done. Like I said, I'm going to be leaving these in DMC order. I know there's other ways to do it. This is just the way that works the best for my brain. I've seen people talking about putting it in symbol order. So, you know, finding ones that are all numbers, all letters. So numbers one through 10 or whatever, alphabet A through Z, and then finding like symbols to put together. So, you know, all the arrows would be in the same place triangles would all be in the same place but for me there's so many of these that are the symbols are just so similar I don't know if that would be more confusing or not because then I, I would be like well where do I put it this has a triangle but also it sort of looks like an arrow so like I said for me I think it's just easier for my brain if I just leave it in DMC order all right let me open up some more of these and de-static them so far, the only saving grace for this has been that most of these do not have a ton of drills because there's so many colors. There's just a lot of these, as you can see, have not very many drills. So let's see how far I get before I come across one that 
I either don't have a sticker for or isn't on the list or whatever. I get it get all the way through the 160s though. Well, through the 100s, I guess, till I get to the 200s before I see anything else like that. Wow, I finished the first row. Woo, that only took me forever. Maybe I should do a comparison with this and the static, the static spray and the dryer sheet method and see which one is faster. Maybe I just think this is faster and it really isn't. Although that would mean I had to go buy some dryer sheets because I don't currently have any. Then I just have three or is that five, five left that I need to de-static. Can look at the next batch and see where I'm at. This has been such a confusing kit. I don't know if it's, I'm trying to remember if we, I don't remember having this many noisy cars until they finished expanding our street because now there's a very long stretch of town of road through town and it feels like they're using it as a drag strip which is annoying and I have no idea how long this is kit up is going to take me because I feel like maybe I need to do some batch work like maybe instead of just doing a little bit of the stickers put all the stickers on all at once and just get that done open up all the bags and spray them with the static spray to get rid of all the static at once so that it doesn't feel like it's taking forever. But I'm afraid if I do it that way, then I will end up somehow confusing myself. So maybe it's just better to take it slow and do it the way that I'm doing it because I definitely don't want to confuse myself any more than this kit already has because it has definitely been confusing between all the mistakes on the size and then the number of colors and i do not have any of these issues with my diana i just find it kind of interesting like i said i wonder if they were in the process of changing things over because when i bought these i don't remember them offering either kit in squares or if they offered them they weren't available they weren't in stock or whatever so these were my only options and I could have waited until the other kits came into stock, but I just thought I don't mind using rounds. So I'll just go ahead and do rounds. Silly me. All right, let me see which of these I've got and which ones I don't and which ones I need and which ones I don't. All right, 208, 209, 210, 211, 223, I've got 224, but I don't think I need it because I don't think I have a sticker for it. And then 225. Let me open all these, de-static them all, except for this one because I don't think I need this one. So I'm going to set that aside with my 150 bottle. <laughs> and I'll come back after I've kitted all the, well, I'll de-static these and then I'll come back and kit them up. Don't go anywhere. All right, so I've got all of these lovely purple drills to kit up. I am going to be adding ABs to this, like I said. So I'll be talking about that a bit, probably at the end of the kit up. But I also wanted to talk about how do you approach a big diamond painting like this? Because one, obviously it can be a bit confusing and overwhelming, especially if this, like I can't imagine if this had been the very first big kit like this that I had ever done. If I had decided to do this one instead of Diana first, I probably would have been pulling out my hair. So basically what I did was I came up with a plan of what I'm calling a plan of attack for this. And so I measured when I unboxed it, I measured the size of the kit. It is, I think 101 by 76. So I wanted to make some cover sheets for it, which I did. I made some ones that have pretty pink roses on them. I don't know if all of this is gonna fit in here. So this one is pretty full. I can't fit all of the drills in there. So I will just keep this bag and put it in the pouch in the top of the bottle case. So I'll keep that separate. So 223 and in looking at the stickers, I do not have a sticker for 224. So that must be one of the 25 colors that I don't need for this kit. 
I guess once I have 25 bags, then I'll know <laughs> that that I should use the rest of them, depending on whether or not those 25, I get to those before the end of the kit up, who knows? All right, so this is the last 200. Whoops, I got a drill hanging on there. All right, and this one, as you can see, this is one of those colors where there's hardly any drills at all. All right, so there's those. Now, into the 300s, I don't have a ton of stickers put on. I just have three. Let me go through the 300s and mark them all off. 71. Also, on the inventory sheet, they go like this. So why on the stickers and the schematic do they go left to right instead of top to bottom? So confusing. And then I have 310, but like I said, I'm pretty sure I don't need 310. So I'm going to mark that I have it in 301, but I'm going to... So pink means that I have it, but the circle around it means I don't need it because I don't have a sticker for 310. Let me move the 400s out of the way. And then I need to put all of the rest of the stickers for the 300s on my bottles. So I started to say, before I was rudely interrupted by yet another car with no muffler, it could be the same car, honestly, but I hope you guys can't hear the noise, but I'm afraid that you can. I know you guys said you can't hear the dog barking, which thankfully that's not happening. But anyway, so I needed a plan of attack for this kit. I measured it and I decided to make my cover sheets. So I made myself some pretty cover sheets and I figured out the size of the cover sheets. And then I figured out based on the size of the cover sheets that I was going to make, how many rows and columns of cover sheets I would need to cover the entire diamond painting. Now, somebody asked me, well, I don't think they asked. I think they said that the way that they would have approached it rather than covering the entire thing with cover sheets, they would have just done a couple of rows. Now, for me personally, I don't roll my diamond paintings when I'm working on them. I've considered it just because I wanted to try out the cool little clippy things that they, somebody I saw doing it on Instagram. And then shortly after that, I saw people 3D printing them. So you can get them from various places. But basically, if you roll your painting, it hooks under if you have like a table that has a lip on it it'll hook under the lip of the table and it will hold the rolled up part while you're working on whatever section. So like people who work from top to bottom, you can roll it all up, work on the top section, and then as you work, push it and it will unroll from underneath the lip of the table. It's a really awesome idea. I just don't generally work that way. I generally work with my paintings laying flat. I know a lot of people have to have them on some sort of an angle or an easel or something because they have back and neck issues. I don't have that problem, at least so far, knock on wood. So I just don't do it that way. So for that reason, that's why I was going to be covering the entire diamond painting with release papers. I did the same thing with Diana, although back then they weren't pr printed ones. They were just plain white release papers. But for me, it's just easier. The cover sheet that came with it, because it's the double-sided adhesive and it's the big, long blue and white, it's in two sections. So trying to get it back down without any bubbles or anything in it is just really difficult. And so I just find it easier to do the cover sheets. Now, I did print some of them and I've got like three, three and a half rows of cover sheets on the diamond painting already. I don't know if I am going to do the entire diamond painting. I probably will. I need to print several more pages worth of cover sheets in order to do that. But I just think it makes it easier for me to work with. It also sections it up automatically for me which means it keeps me on track as far as sections and everything. So that's the plan. So I figured out how many I would need and I will be printing those out 
and getting that all done. All right, you guys, someone is out using a leaf blower. I don't know if you can hear that or not. I'm gonna take a break, let everyone finish all of their driving and outside work and whatever. I'm gonna go take care of my computer because I'm about ready to throw these hard drives in the trash and I'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Okay guys, I'm just gonna try and kit up a few more of these and then I think I'm gonna call it a day. I'm losing the light. Everyone is driving up and down the street. I need to go get something to eat. Maybe it's because I'm hangry that I'm getting so frustrated, but I just don't wanna make you guys listen to cars driving up and down my road. They're annoying to me. I can't imagine how annoying they are in the background. I am trying to get rid of all of this static, which is also annoying. So it's just kind of a whole bunch of things not going well for me today. So I think what I'm going to do is come back and approach this when my mindset and my lighting and hopefully the noises are a little bit better. So I did go through all of these. I've de-static these ones here. So 310, I have drills for, but I don't need. It is not on, I don't have a sticker for 310. It's not on the schematic on the canvas. So I guess I have drills, 310 drills I don't need. There aren't very many of them. So I'm just going to set them aside with the other number that I had that I don't need. So I'm just gonna start a little pile of those because that's not the only number. Not only do I not need 310, I had number 315, which is on my sheet here, but I do not have a sticker for. So again, I'm assuming that means I don't need that number, that DMC number of drills. So I'm already, even though I'm only in the 300s, I'm already at, what is that, four different colors of drills? that I've been given that I don't need because I also don't need number 369, which I guess I can keep the drills and just put them in my spares. But again, this drill, has, this kit has just been so confusing. Like why give me all of these drills? And there's no rhyme or reason to the way that it was kitted up because if they gave me the drills in the inventory sheet for the square, then how did I end up with the stickers for the round. So obviously there was a breakdown in communication somewhere. Now 317 and 318, there's both, both of these have quite a few. 317 might go all in one container, but I think I'm gonna have leftovers of the 318. And I don't honestly know how many, I should probably figure that out, how many extra containers I'm gonna have. So if I wanted to put them in more than one container, more than one bottle if I could do that. I probably can, but I don't know that I want to, even if I could, because again, I'm trying to avoid confusing myself. They've done a good enough job of that <laughs> confusing me, so I think whatever I can do to minimize that is what I need to do, so. And then 319 is the last one here that I have de-staticked. I need to go through, I've put stickers through most of the 400s on, so I need to go through the 400 drills and see which ones I have, if any, that I don't need, that I don't have stickers for, that I have drills for, or if it's all going to work out for those. So I've done, I think, 30 drills at this point, 30 colors of drills. I've got three rows filled. I've got one sticker for a color I don't need, and I've got four colors of drills, bags of drills that I don't need either. I think I'm gonna take a break, go eat dinner, go diamond paint on a different kit, and I'm gonna come back tomorrow when my light is better, my mood is better, and hopefully everyone's at work and not driving up and down my road. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay guys, I'm back. <laughs> and yeah, we'll, we'll see how today goes. Uh, I have de-staticked a bunch of these. I already went through all of the 400s and marked off which ones I have that I need, which ones that I don't have. So I'm currently sitting at six. There were two in the 400s that I don't actually need. 
So of the 25 that I'm expecting to end up being ones that I don't need, I'm at six. It is morning and I'm already spilling. It is morning. It is snowing very heavily. I posted some pictures on Facebook and Instagram. My son and I got up to go out for our walk this morning and I came out of my bedroom and he's wearing snow boots and I knew it was supposed to snow, but it wasn't supposed to snow very much. And he never wears snow boots. And I was like, do I need snow boots? I put my snow boots on because I didn't want my regular tennis shoes that I wear to get wet. And walking on uneven ground is not great for my knee. Plus wearing the big heavy snow boots. So we didn't walk as far as we usually do, but we did walk. My husband had a doctor's appointment. So he headed off in the cold for that. We are supposed to pick up our groceries and I'm kind of waiting to see how bad it's going to get because it looks like we're going to get more than they said. Like we were just supposed to get about an inch and I think we've got almost two already and we're only a couple of hours in. It's supposed to snow until late tonight. You're seeing this in future time so maybe I'll have discovered by then or posted by then what we got and what we didn't but... I am getting close. I've got two rows left, two and a few cases, bottles left here to finish my first layer of the first case. I did actually get some diamond painting in yesterday, so I'm feeling better about that. We're all just kind of, I don't know, winter mode. I guess all the schools are as well, because my husband was telling me that the local school had canceled. I went out and looked. My oldest had to put in she actually has sick leave to cover her time off that she needs to recuperate from the surgery i guess the last time i had any dealings with fmla was when i was pregnant with my youngest and i thought you got paid for those first six weeks but you could take up to 12 just the second six weeks would not be paid well now you can take up to, at least the policy where she works, you can take up to 26 weeks and retain your job, but you get paid for none of them. You have to take any sick leave that you have accrued to pay for your time off. I suppose that's to keep people from abusing it, but you know, what if you do if you don't have any sick leave? You just don't get paid? I mean, I know the school has a bank of people that donate, so people who don't have sick leave and have things go wrong can have paid sick leave, but I thought things were supposed to get better. Not getting, I mean, the 26 weeks is better, I guess, but not getting paid for any of it doesn't seem better. And I don't know, maybe I just assumed that's how everyone did it, and it was just my employer that gave us the six weeks. My employer at the time, I don't know. Her school closed today. I'm like, well, that seems kind of unfair that she has to take sick leave for today when everybody else is getting it off paid and not having to do that because the school decided to close. But I don't think she's going to be able to go in and change it because she had to put in for all of her leave at once. You know, it just seems a silly way for the system to work. But So my husband is out at his doctor's appointment. Pretty sure my son stayed up all night gaming and so he went back downstairs to sleep after we got back from our walk. So I probably won't see him for several hours. And then we we're supposed to go get our groceries later today. I'm kind of waiting to see how bad the weather's gonna be. We have an SUV with four wheel drive, so I'm not worried about getting there. Plus my husband is used to driving in the snow, but so I'm gonna get all of these open so I can de-static them. I am maybe halfway through the first sleeve. I knew this was gonna take me multiple sessions to kit up, but I wasn't expecting all the static, so yeah, not as enjoyable as I was hoping it would be. So I apologize for that. There'll be lots of breaks while I do things that I just think you guys will find boring, like me de-staticking everything. So I'm going to de-static these. I will be back. We'll finish pouring these in, and then I got to start all over with the next section. I think I'm getting close to being done with the first level of trays and then I'll move on to the second one and we'll see how it goes when I try to pick these up. 
Oh, well, that's not too bad. They're, they're sort of staying in place. So, okay. All right, be right back. Okay, let's see how far I get with these. So hubby was talking to some of his colleagues yesterday. He's been watching the job boards to see if anything is going to come available because he's been having such a frustrating time trying to apply for unemployment. So everything is online these days because of course it is. And so you have to go to the website, set up an account, log in from there and then basically that's where you do everything that's your portal to you know basically say hey i got laid off i need to apply for unemployment and then whatever else has to be done however he got everything set up got the account set up every time he tries to log in it says it can't it won't let him he's tried a whole bunch of different browsers to see if that was the issue He's tried doing it from his phone, his iPad, his computer, nothing seems to work. He gets to a point, no matter which browser he's using, where it says you can't go any further, you have to call and get assistance. So you call the number that they give you and you have to listen to this big, long, literally five minute spiel about going to the website, it spells the name of the website for you, tells you what you need to do, all of that. And then once you get done with that, you can actually get to the menu where it asks you what you're calling about. So he goes through all of the menu choices, which I think it takes like five or six different menu choices before it actually is like, okay, you need to talk to an agent. And then it will say, oh, well, we're really busy. All agents are busy, so you'll have to call back. And it disconnects you and hangs up on you. I'm like, this is the dumbest system ever. Like, I understand that people are busy and the phone lines are busy, but there should be some kind of hold or waiting system, not just it hangs up on you. Cause he's literally been doing this since Monday. It is now, well, it's Friday while I'm filming this, this section anyway. And he's been doing it all week and has yet to actually reach a person. Every time it call, he calls, it disconnects him. And while it's frustrating to stay on hold, and I get that, I don't understand. This seems like a really dumb way to do things. And maybe I shouldn't be surprised it is the government, but it's just crazy. So he's been dealing with that, but he was actually talking to his colleagues. One of the companies that is hopefully gonna be one of the ones that hires them is one that he actually used to work for years and years ago when he first came here. And he still is friends with a bunch of the people there. So he's contacted them because he was looking at the job boards yesterday and they had an opening for one position. So he was calling his friend to see what the position was for, the way they do things now, the people have to put their names in what they call a bid for jobs instead of this, them just going down the books. That way the onus is on the employee to inquire rather than the employer, which seems crazy, but again, business. So anyway, he was talking to this guy and asking him, you know, what's going on? Why is this particular job not being, you know, out there standing instead of being bid on? Okay, I need to go through these and mark off which ones I have and then see which ones I don't need. So he was talking to the guy that he's friends with they're still saying that as soon as they get the okay from the higher ups, they'll be hiring a bunch of people, but they do have this one job available right now. I said, so they're just hiring one person at a time because when you talk to the guy, they're actually hiring more than one person. They just are only doing it one person at a time. And I'm like, that makes zero sense. Why not, if you need 30 people, why not put out a 30 calls? Not my circus, not my monkeys, but anyway, the upshot is it, is that they're actually looking for people. So now he's debating, do I want to try and go get that job? Do I want to wait? Because they don't have the okay yet to do the big cruise that they're going to be putting on. And he would be a foreman if he waits. I think it's six of one, half dozen of the other. And I told him that I think he'd be working for the company either way. So whether he takes it now and gets a couple more days pay in or whether he waits until 
they're for sure going to take him as a foreman. I don't know. I mean, the thing is, we don't know how long that's going to take. It could take a couple of days. It could take a couple of weeks. It could take a couple of months. We just don't know. We'll be okay whatever he decides to do. It just the whole, he's frustrated with the whole situation with the unemployment. And I'm like, well, I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you there. That nobody's going to be able to change that. That's just government. <laughs> and we get to deal with it. All right, so now I need to look on here, 500, 501, 502, 503. See, I don't have a sticker for 505, so odds are I don't need that one. I guess I didn't need to circle that whole thing. Okay, so 505, I don't need. 517, 518, 520, I do need all of those. All right, I'm going to peel this 150 sticker off of here and just stick it back in since I apparently don't need it, but I do need this bottle because I do have other colors that I need it for. All right, so these bottles will finish out the first layer here of my 140 bottle case. So I need to de-static these and then after I de-static them, I will need to shuffle things around, move the tray layer that is filled out of the way, pull out all the bottles for the next one, and go from there. So I'm gonna de-static these, and then I'll be back. Don't go anywhere. All right, let's get this going, and then I can switch everything out, like I said. It'd be so nice if maybe some of these other sleeves didn't have staticky drills. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna bet I don't get that lucky, but I did actually manage to get some diamond painting in yesterday, so I'm excited about that. I don't wanna get too far behind, but everything is just taking longer than I thought, this whole process included. I mean, I figured this was going to take a while. I wasn't anticipating that I would be dealing with static in every single bag, but it is what it is, right? which because I have static in almost every single bag, I've sort of abandoned using my little funnel over there because they just don't pour nicely and it doesn't work as well when they're static. I guess at least, even though I have a lot of colors, most of them do not have a lot of drills, which I don't know if that's better or worse for static, but I'm trying to find some silver linings. Four more bottles and I'll be done with the first layer of the first tray. So I am making progress, even if it's not as fast as I would like. And if I did dumb things like a spill, if I didn't do things like that, it would take even less time. This is bringing back, just looking at all of these stickers and the symbols and everything is just, yeah, bringing back all those memories of me working on Diana. Gosh. That feels like so long ago. It was just a couple of years, but I was pretty new in my YouTube journey. I was pretty new to diamond painting, taking on a whole bunch of stuff just to see what was what, what I could do, what I couldn't do. It was fun. I actually did a challenge during Diana, a 24 hour diamond painting challenge where I stayed up 24 hours in a row and diamond painted. They do it a little differently social media wise. I didn't post anywhere. I think I put, posted some pictures on Facebook maybe when I was doing it or maybe Instagram or both. I can't remember now, but I didn't do like I wasn't live or anything. Of course, I couldn't have done that back then. We were on an internet service provider that metered our data. There's no way I could have gone live for 24 hours in a row. We would never have afforded our internet bill. So that is the first layer of the first tr case complete. So here is the first tray. I'm gonna switch it out for the bottom layer. So I gotta take all the bottles out of there. This one will be going on the top because this is the first spate of DMC numbers. I need to take all the bottles out. I'll put some of the stickers on and then I will start sorting again and see if there's anything else that I don't need. So I will be back in a flash. 
Okay, so I stopped at 523. Let's see which one of these I have that I don't need. 24, 35, 43, 50, 52, 53, 54, 61, 580. 580 I have and don't need. Where is 580? Okay, let me set that one aside. 581, and then I'm into the 600s, which I can already see. 605 is one that I have that I don't need because the next one is 610. So how many of my 25 do I already have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of the 25 that I don't need, I already have picked out. So I guess that's good. So now I can open all of these, de-static the ones that I need to, and then I can move on to the 600s. I probably, since there's not very many of the 600, I will probably open the next sleeve of drills and just start there since I can just start with the 600s. So I need to de-static all of these. So I'm gonna do that real quick and I'll be right back. You guys, like I said, I knew this was gonna be a multi-day process for me. It'll probably just end up being one video for you guys. I'll just edit everything together, but did not anticipate it being this slow. It's amazing how much just a little bit of static can slow you down. And again, glad that, you know, most of these bags do not have a ton of drills in them, but I still have to go through and de-static each one. Whether I was using dryer sheets or whatever, it still adds extra time that I would rather be spending diamond painting. But slow and steady wins the race, right? Just am anxious to get started on projects and get other projects finished, you know? I need more hands. I think I've said that before. Or clones. To clone myself so one of me could be diamond painting while one of me is filming, one of me is editing. Man, I could get a lot done that way. Getting into all the purples here. I actually can't wait to get started on this one and just to see how it's gonna turn out and how different it is or how similar it is to Diana. I still love looking at Diana. She hangs in my living room and periodically sitting on the couch watching TV. I'll just sit and stare at her for a little while because she's so nice and sparkly. It's the light that gets reflected off of from the dining room light or whatever light is on, super sparkly. And like I said, I'm going to be adding in ABs for this painting. I've got a bunch of ABs left over from Diana, and I think a bunch of new ones that I've picked up since then. I don't know if this is all going to fit in one bottle. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe if I shake them down, I think I'm going to be able to get them all in there. Apologies if I'm shaking the camera while I do this. I'm trying not to shake the table, so I'm not shaking the camera. All right, got them all in one bottle. So I managed to get through to the 600s with only two colors that everything wouldn't fit in one bottle. So that's good. So I won't have a huge amount of them, extra bags floating around, at least not so far. So there's the first row in the second layer. So now I have these drills. Let me just mark these really quickly. 640, 642, 32, 13, 12, 11, 10, 12, 11, 10. Now, do I have bottles for all of these stickers? 610, 611, 612, 613, 32, 40, 42. Okay, so all of these are going to be ones that I will actually use. These are all open. I need to de-static them. And then once I get them put in the bottles, I will go get the second sleeve. And I'll start the whole process over again. Hey guys, editing me here. And I have decided I'm gonna split this video into two parts. It is already almost an hour long. While I could make it a two hour video, I just kind of feel like that's too long. So I'm gonna split it into two. And if you wanna wait to watch one until part two comes out, it's hopefully entertaining. This kit has been 
really interesting slash frustrating slash I don't know what because of dealing with static and all of the issues that it has and everything, but I'm determined to power through and finish it up. So thanks for watching all the way to the end of part one and keep an eye out, hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss part two. That's it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for sticking around till the end of the video. Before you leave, don't forget to do all the things. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching.